So my talk is about how to test your modules uh, using Beaker. So you're doing acceptance testing and using Docker. So I used to be a SES admin. Uh, quite li lo loved my job, but all the tedious tasks of bringing up environments took more time and I couldn't do all the cool stuff that I wanted to do. So I turned into more developing, tried to use Puppet, uh, make my life a bit easier. I've also been working with Elastic for a little over two years now, um, doing all our uh, Puppet modules. Enough about me. I want to see some hands. Who are you? Who of you uh, develop modules? Okay. Who of you uses RSpec Puppet? A good amount. And Beaker. Mm, would have loved to see a bit more, but hopefully after this talk, uh, you'll be able to raise your hand as well. So for me, the life cycle when I create a module is that I design something, I develop it, write some tests, and validate if the, the module actually does what it needs to do. For testing, you can do it all manually. Just write, run some Puppet code, uh, check if the files exist, uh, check if the service is running, but it's tedious, takes a lot of time, uh, usually means that you don't want to spend that time because you want to do cool stuff, so you don't run your test at all. And it doesn't scale at all. It's just you running those tests. So we can start with unit testing. With RSpec Puppet, it allows you to make assertions of what the modules should do, or at least what you expect it to do. And the results are pretty accurate and pretty fast. But there's some downsides to it. The coverage is only good as the tests are. If you only write tests for half the things, you'll never know if half of that is going to work or not. Even if you make all kinds of tests which assume the wrong things, it's still going to break. Well, your module's going to break, but your test might, might pass. So it's still going to be shitty. And make sure you test your module, not anything that you depend on. If you depend on the Apache module, for example, just make sure you test that you actually include an Apache module with the, the right variables. Don't test what the app Apache modules should do. Acceptance testing is the next level type of testing. Making sure that what you assume it does it actually does, but it's not that easy to start with. It's, uh, for me, I've started a year and a half ago with acceptance testing, and with a lack of documentation and being brand new, it's quite a maze and quite a journey to get through. So initially I started manual testing. Launching a Vagrant VM, so copy my module there, run some Puppet code, check the files, check the servers. Pretty tedious. And again, it doesn't scale. It's just you having to run those tests manually, launch a, v a VM all the time, do all the waiting. Doesn't work. And especially if, you wanna, if your module is uh, for multiple distributions, you have to do the same test, the same story, over and over again. And to be fair, we all like to do cool stuff and not run those stupid tests every time. So I started to look at Beaker. So Beaker is uh, the acceptance testing framework built by Puppet Labs. Uh, Alice Nodelman's been writing most of the code. It allows you to test your configurations against a, a VM 
without destroying your, your own laptop or your production system. It connects uh, very good with things like Docker, Vagrant, even EC2 if you prefer to use that. It's very easy to use uh, within your CI environments. If you use Tim, uh, TeamCity or Jenkins or anything else. And it allows you to test against uh, Puppet Open Source, uh, Puppet Enterprise, and also the new all-in-one agent. So it's very flexible. A lot of programmers, or at least like me, uh, been using RSpec a lot with RSpec Puppet. So I know the, the RSpec language pretty good. So they build also the Beaker RSpec gem. And that allows you to connect Beaker using the RSpec DSL. It also allows you to reuse all the extensive tooling that's around RSpec. For example, JUnit reporting or server spec that allows you to make automated assertions of files and services. And it includes also a lot of interesting helper functions, like writing a custom fact that your module might depend on, or write out uh, a Hera uh, file. So it's been quite a journey for me. I started with it a little over a year and a half ago. Uh, back in February 2014, uh, I finally started using Docker. So it's not been easy. So I started first with VirtualBox and Vagrant. Because hey, that's what I know, it works. It, it's pretty decent, but it's slow. Especially you have the full virtualization layer that needs to be started, booted up. And in my CI environment, I didn't have a single test for a single Puppet version. I was testing against multiple different Puppet versions. So eventually I ended up with a matrix job of 36 different options. And unfortunately due to a limitation within VirtualBox, I could only run one of those tests at a time. And that caused me to wait about nine hours for it to finish. Well, I'm not gonna wait nine hours to hear if, some, if I'm screwed up or not. So I went to look at Docker. So that was the new hotness. Everybody was talking about it. And let's see if we can use that for it. Well, it definitely was faster. But there was another problem when I started using it. Uh, it initially, it was just launching the SSH process. And as soon as I wanted to manage the service, just try out if, if it works, it failed. So I kind of had to sort of abuse Docker in a way. Not many people are happy with it, but I had to run uh, the init process because I needed the, the full service management. But I still need SSH as well because Beaker uh, does all the commands over SSH, uh, server spec as well. So what I do with Docker is considered quite non-standard, but it's required. And it, but it's still much faster than using Vagrant and VirtualBox. And then I ran into another problem. I wanted to test against more operating systems, more Puppet versions. I wanted to add more tests. And then my runtime exploded again. And I had to wait hours again. Well, not hours, but much longer than I hoped for. So make sure that I had to make sure that my test coverage was still up to par. Make sure that every every feature that I have uh, is still being tested, but without increasing the runtime too much. And then I want, wanted to automate it. Because I'm not gonna wait all those hours 
doing all those tests. Because I want to continue building. I've got a lot of features that I want to implement, a lot of new modules that I want to build. I'm not going to sit around and wait. So I started implementing the automation part within Jenkins. So first I started off with the simple unit testing. Let it run. At least I'll, that way I will have pretty basic and fast feedback and have some decent coverage. And only if that passes, then I'll start the, mo the more expensive testing, the acceptance testing. And also with acceptance testing, I build a touchstone build first. So I do one build first. And if that one passes, then I kind of assume that the rest will work. But still want to make sure it does. And then I started looking at Puppet Enterprise testing. Because there were still some weird things that people were reporting about it. So I, I thought, OK, we'll, we'll add that as well. So again, first unit testing, then acceptance testing for the Puppet open source. And if that works, then I can do the really expensive ones with Puppet Enterprise. So this is an example of a list of the Puppet modules uh, tests that I have for the Elasticsearch Puppet module. And there are different categories. So I got different on-commit uh, tests. So the unit testing and acceptance testing. I've got integration tests that tests if the module actually works with all the different software versions that I tell, it, tell people it works with. I do pull request testing, make sure that all the pull requests that people send that it passes. Unit testing and acceptance testing. And I also do periodic full acceptance testing. So make sure that it just keeps on working. If something changes in the operating system, I'd rather know that it still works or not. So I've split off my open source and Puppet Enterprise testing. That way I have pretty quick feedback on the different stages. You could put everything into a single big job and wait half a day for everything to pass. It doesn't really work. So I split it off everything nicely to make everything pretty clear. And also added pull request testing. People want feedback. If they send some patches for your code, they rather know if something works or not. Instead of waiting for you to merge and then do testing and then breaks. And in this case, I've added, uh, I've slimmed down the whole testing matrix. Because I'm not going to wait two, three hours for people to get their feedback. So I test the oldest version and the newest version, both for Puppet Enterprise and uh, Puppet Open Source. And this way, they have pretty decent coverage, and faster feedback. And if, if something fails, then they'll have at least the feedback, and they can fix it. And they're pretty happy with it. And after this, I can merge it, and then all the, the full blunt tests run. And if it then fails, then I can always ask them to fix it. But at least we'll have that initial uh, feedback. Also do integration testing. And that's something that I haven't seen with a lot of modules these days. So what I do with integration testing is making sure that what I'd say that this module works with X versions of this software, Elasticsearch in this case, it actually does. So that if the software vendor uh, releases a new version and it breaks something, at least I'll get that feedback before my users do. Because there's nothing as horrible as people telling you, hey, I'm using your Puppet module with version X of the software. It's not working. 
And then you still need to find out what's wrong with it. And because I work at Elastic, it's pretty easy for me to uh, get my hands on the snapshot builds as well. So every time they change something, I get a new build, and I can test against that. Building all those tests, I slowly found out I got more Ruby code for my tests than actual Puppet code, which made me quite unhappy. Because I want to write Puppet stuff, not more tests. And I found out that it's because I want you have, the modules are pretty big, and you have so many different functionality in there. And you have to make sure that every situation that you say it works in, it actually does. And that's why I've got 64.5% of Ruby code. And that's only unit testing and acceptance testing. Not sure if it's a good number, bad number, but it just uh, happened organi organically. Along the way, since I've been doing this, I've learned a lot of lessons with it. Because it's, it was pretty new a year and a half ago. So one of the lessons is integration testing. Make sure your module works with the software. Test also the core functionality. Don't test any of your dependencies. Make, they know, they say that assumptions are wrong, but let's, let's assume that your dependency modules actually do some testing. Also, more tests doesn't mean it's better. You can have thousands of tests that have so, many, so much overlap across all the different tests that you already have. Doesn't mean that you, you increase your runtime, people have to wait, but the test coverage is still the same. And make sure that the feedback you provide is usable. If you test against wrong things and it passes, people will think it works, while it might not. So make sure that the feedback you provide to your users with the acceptance testing and unit testing, that it's usable. And there's still a lot of more things that I'm learning every day to improve One of them is, for example, I cut down one of my uh, unit tests, which ran initially for 10 minutes, and cut it down to 30 seconds, while remaining the same test coverage. So it does pay off to spend a little bit more time on how you build and design your tests. So hopefully I made you guys interested in using Beaker for your module testing. So the things you can do now is go to the Puppet Labs uh, organization on GitHub, check out the Beaker and Beaker RSpec repos. There's a lot of detailed information on uh, the wiki pages of those repos. There's also uh, an amazing presentation last year at PuppetConf from Alice uh, doing an uh, a good interview about how Beaker works and why it's been made. And also, if you don't really build that many modules, but you do want to test them, the Puppets community guys have built their uh, own CI infrastructure, which is free for everybody to use. So I would definitely have a look at that. All right, that went a bit quicker than I expected, but <laughs> any questions? Hi. 
Um, so if you have an existing infrastructure and the only testing you have currently is from Forge modules, how would you suggest to get started? If you already have, you know, existing puppet code and it just seems a little overwhelming to move into that sort of testing and having to backfill everything? Good question. Um, so I started with adding acceptance testing while I was building the puppet modules already. Uh, so the same story. Um, I just looked at other existing modules that implemented acceptance testing. So I looked at the different uh, Puppet Labs modules. Uh, just look at how they've implemented it, look at the first basic tests, just try to implement it, get it to work, and then slowly expand on, on that part. Um, You can, use, uh, you can look at uh, the Elasticsearch Puppet module that I've built at Elastic. Uh, there's a very basic test in there that just checks if the module is copied over correctly. Uh, another test that does uh, the simple class test. Can I install the application? Does the servers run? So there are a lot of good uh, existing modules that should help you on, along the way. So you mentioned code coverage. Uh, what tools are you using to do code coverage for Puppet Code? Uh, on the unit testing, there is, uh, within RSpec Puppet, there's already uh, some code coverage in there. So that allows you to, that gives a list of all the Puppet resources that have been generated, but not have been asserted. So that creates a, a whole list already. Uh, within acceptance testing, uh, I haven't found a way yet. Still, look, still looking for it. Um, but yeah, no way yet that I found. Can you talk a little bit about how you defined and managed your Docker images? Yeah, uh, so I had to build my own Docker images, or at least work from existing ones and build a lot of stuff on top of that, because I had to launch the init process, uh, launch SSH, so I had to make some uh, modifications. Um, those images I just managed in a GitHub repo under my own uh, GitHub or, uh, name, um, and do, uh, Beaker allows you, using the Docker hypervisor, to pull those in automatically, so you don't have to worry about it, as long as they're on uh, Docker Hub. Um, I'm still planning to do, like, automated builds, so that if I change anything or need to rebuild them, it gets done automatically. Does it answer your question? One more. With the um, existing modules, like say Apache module or something, Puppet Labs Apache, so to run those on your Docker infrastructure, you have to edit the nodes file and stuff. There's no magic way around that. Uh, the existing Puppet Labs modules uh, have their own node definitions indeed, um, because they use uh, their own testing infrastructure. Um, if you want to run it on Docker, you could, in theory, copy over the node definitions that I have in the Elasticsearch Puppet module uh, and, and utilize those. When you're doing your initial testing, like on, on your laptop, are you running your Docker containers are there and running tests, or are you just doing, like, you know, iter iterative development, like on, a, on Vagrant, or are you not even using that anymore? Uh, I don't use Vagrant at all anymore. Um, so all the development itself, I just do on my uh, own development machine. Um, and every time I add a new test, I can just launch the Docker uh, VM using Beaker and have that uh, automated. Any more questions? One more. Uh, 
What about using a VMware hypervisor to stand up your ephemeral VMs and run your tests on those? Uh, haven't test, haven't worked with that myself uh, because I was kind of forced to use uh, something else. Uh, there should be a hypervisor for it. If it's not there, uh, it should be fairly easy to build and uh, utilize that. Um, not sure how it would work, but it should be easy to do. So, uh, thank our great speaker and um, good rest of the conference. Thank you.